Hello everyone, in this video let's discuss Hoke Brown failure criteria. In one of our previous videos we have already discussed um, one very common kind of failure criteria which is more Coulomb failure criteria and that criteria is extremely important it is widely used um, and if you haven't watched that video I encourage you to watch that video before um, you get to Hoke Brown. Um, but just to recap uh, what more Coulomb criteria is if I was to draw a Mohr circle um, for any soil or rock uh, with my x-axis as uh, my normal stress sigma, my y-axis as my um, shear stress um, tau, and if I was to say draw a Mohr circle like this um, where my principal stresses are say sigma 3, say sigma 1, um, now what you can do is uh, you can do a bunch of testing on this material you can do a lot of tests what you can do is you can vary these stresses and under different stress conditions you can come up with um, a lot more uh, more circles so you, for example if I was to increase my sigma 3 from here to here I could come up with a more circle which would look something like this um, if I increase this even further, I would come up with a more circle which would say look like this. Now, our more Coulomb failure criteria was essentially if we were to draw a tangent, our envelope for our more circles here, this right here was the criteria that we discussed earlier. So this is more Coulomb. And what you notice is w the relationship, the um, relationship or the uh, equation for this line, it was for a straight line. So this is linear. Now, uh, besides this more Coulomb criteria, there are also other criteria out there, other theories. Um, so Today, let's discuss Hoke Brown um, and what that criteria really is. So, if I was to put this criteria in an equation form, what I would come up with is sigma 1 equals sigma 3 plus square root of MCO sigma 3 plus SCO. Now, what does this even mean, this equation? It, it looks kind of confusing. Um, so let's see what this is really all about. So looking at the equation itself, you'll see that this is really an, a relationship between our principal stresses here and everything else here, the, everything else that is remaining, which is um, M, C, O, S, C, O. These are our constants. And... Um, just so you know, let's focus on CO for now and, and let's let's do what we did in case of more Coulomb. Let's try to do the same thing here. Let's try to draw more circles um, just like we did earlier. And again, my x-axis sigma, my y-axis tau. And now let's use this criteria to draw our more circles. So let's start with um, our origin here, where my sigma 3 equals 0. So if my sigma 3 is 0, you'll see that um, my Mohr circle would come up something like this. Why like this? Well, you can just put in the equation, right? Sigma 1 equals 0 plus whole thing zero plus S C O equals um, I apologize I think this should be C O square C O square yes that makes more sense um, so our sigma one would be under root S times C O okay so just based on this you can kind of tell that what C O is 
um, CO over here is our uniaxial compression strength if our rock was completely intact. That is, let's just say this is CO. So what this really means is, what this CO really means is, um, if I have to draw an element, um, which is say, for my principal stresses, sigma one, and let's say this is sigma three. If we are talking about uniaxial compression, that means sigma three is zero. That is like we plot it over here, sigma three is zero. And then we only have stresses about a single axis that is sigma one. And in a perfect world where our rocks were completely intact and they were just perfect rocks and there was just no um, kind of like say uh, force within them. Uh, there was no sort of say micro cracking and just one complete solid if in that perfect world, if it was even possible, we would have our S um, for intact rocks, S equals one, that means our sigma one is C is zero, or, or uniaxial compressive strength. But we don't live in a perfect world. The rocks that exist, they, 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 they have faults within them. Um, they, 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 they're just not perfect. So typically what you see is um, S is, has to be, and it is almost never one. It is typically less than one. So it is almost like a, like a correction factor um, to kind of reduce the uniaxial strength for a material um, considering it has a uh, certain force and just inherent, um, say micro cracking, if you will, um, within it. Now moving forward, we drew one scenario for sigma three equals zero, and then we have our sigma one this is what the Mohr circle would look like. Now, just like how we did for our Mohr Coulomb criteria, we can do something similar for our um, Hoch Brown criteria. That is, if I increase sigma three here to over here, again, my Mohr circle would be something like this. If I was to increase it even further, my Mohr circle would be like this. And again, like, just testing my material under different conditions, it would just increase like this. And essentially what Hoke Brown is telling us is that unlike before, this relationship is, well, not linear. Um, what does that mean? Well, before when I drew my Mohr Coulomb criteria, I drew a straight line, meaning a linear relationship. However, now, say if I have to draw on top of this, what my Mohr Coulomb would have looked like, it would be something like this, um, which is linear. But what Hoke Brown said is, and this is just based on testing, when they did the testing and they tried to fit to the data, they said that we can come up with an even better fit if I can create a non-linear relationship. So this is non-linear and that is pretty much the only difference. Now, linear is good enough for most applications. This is not even that prevalent and uh, this is something that you should know very well and it is great that now you know Hawk Brown too. Um, and this nonlinear relationship, well, if you 
think about it, if I was testing it out, you'll see that it is almost like a parabola, you know, where this relationship is like a parabola and uh, and like we were just talking for a full circle over here, like this guy here was our uniaxial compressive compressive strength and um, yeah that's pretty much it um, well one last thing that I want to point out we, we have already discussed like we have we have talked about these constants within this equation this criteria equation like I said has these constants and these constants are again like we have in a way seen them before so if I was to show you um, let me get a different color over here let's go with um, let's go with orange so you see this M this constant M what this really is is it is almost like how in more column we had our angle phi our friction angle um, this is analogous to our friction angle um, it's a measure for um, friction in rocks And on the other hand, um, let's go with a different color. Um, we also did not talk about S. Our S, again, is nothing but it is almost comparable to cohesion that we talked about uh, in Moore Coulomb. Um, it's a measure for how fractured Um, the rock is you know just how we just said like S would be one in a perfect world um, where you have completely intact unfractured rock and yeah that's our hope ground failure criteria and that's it for today thank you for watching bye